everybody sean here from shooty school this is the last video in my song creator series if you can make it through this video you will be an expert in the song creator we're going to cover arrangements song parts a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in between plus i'll give you my producing tips on how to create song structures if you like what i do do subscribe get notifications and if you watch my videos right away you'll never see an ad if the video is yet to receive 1,000 views so let's get started here's the special sauce about the song creator arrangements it may even be a letdown due to its simplicity but consider my banter and you may find a valuable use for it since it can be a major producing tool for your compositions arrangements contain no midi they are literally an empty song structure. That is it. When you drag a file to the song creator, you see this pretty graphic here. This graphic represents the song structure of the currently selected arrangement here. If you look at the colored song part bars in the big graphic, and then look at the selected arrangements, tiny song part bars, you'll see that they match. And if I click through the arrangements, we'll see the large graphic update accordingly. What is handy in the new Easy Drummer 3 Song Creator is we can see the song section lengths represented, so we know the exact song part lengths we're dealing with. Now under the song parts area, you've watched me build a song out from this panel in my past two song creator videos. Link to those vids are in the description. But in this example, we will not use this panel, but let's remind ourselves that all these columns are beats that were generated by examining my source file here. And theoretically, the beats in the columns should match the source file enough to build out a full song. If we switch over to the Arrangements panel, and I'll drag the second to last arrangement down to the song track, we've now made a prefabricated song instantly, and the song creator has selected the first beat in every column to create our Insta song. Take note that the song creator may add opening hits on its own. Skynet is coming for us. And if you want to fight back to save humanity, simply launch edit playstyle on the beat in question and disengage the opening hit. This intro beat has an opening hit, yet it doesn't in the song parts column. So I'll remove the opening hit if I wish, like this. Now if we look at the arrangement preset we used, we'll see the typical song structure codes of A, B, and C. A means verse, B means pre-chorus, and C means chorus. So as you look at the default arrangements, you can get an idea of what you're in for with these codes. This one is just vamping a verse, and this one is just alternating from verse to chorus, for example. If we click and reveal the song creator menu here, at the top, there's a copy command. This will copy the currently selected arrangement, and that is all. So if I select the second one, which is just vamping the verse with an ending, and then select copy, it will paste at the playhead in the song track if you use the paste key command, or wherever you right click and select paste all. If you select Add Arrangement to Song Track, it will do the same thing except put the arrangement at the beginning of your song track. But keep in mind, these commands will overwrite anything you already have in your song track, so be careful. Now what I think is useful is this was the song that I built from scratch from my last two videos. I want to keep the song structure, not the MIDI, because arrangements contain no MIDI, so I can use that empty song structure in the future and make songs instantly with it. I can select Save Song as User Arrangement. And now we see a segregation in the arrangements list with my arrangement at the top under User Arrangements. I was not prompted to name this user file, so I'll go to the menu and rename it here. Or I can delete my user arrangements here as well. Here's a super warning. The undo command does not work after deleting user arrangements. So it's straight up hasta la vista, baby. So do be careful. I'll make a new user arrangement quickly to get it back. And know that if you right-click on a user arrangement, you'll have the similar options we already covered. See the end of my video for some tech talk on how to share user arrangements since TuneTrack isn't allowing you to access them easily.
You can audition song arrangements from their respective play icons. Since these are full songs without any way to navigate, it will be a lengthy listen. What's handy is you can drag an arrangement directly out of Easy to transfer or backup. It saves as a single full song MIDI file. Here's what it would look like if you imported it back into Easy or your DAW. What I did not cover in great detail was the song parts in my previous two videos. Here's the crash course on your options. First, playback. If I play a beat and want to audition the next one by hitting the play buttons, all the beats start from scratch and in the exact time you select them. Now if that interrupts the head bob of your musical soul, click the names of the song parts instead for a seamless transition like this. As opposed to this. I love these options and being able to navigate the longer song parts by clicking in the tiny playhead area like this, but not clicking and dragging. Hitting the spacebar will stop a song part from playing back, but not start a selected song part. You must click a song part play icon at least once to start playback in the song creator columns. Now what's super cool, whether you're writing death metal or a Zappa style song, you may want more than the default 7 song parts. So if I click on a MIDI block and go to song parts, besides being able to change any MIDI block to whichever song part I want, I see manage user song parts, which is fantastic. Simply click add new song user part, select any color you wish, and click on its name to name it and hit close. Now, if I right click on a song track MIDI file, we'll see our new custom song part. I just don't completely agree with the new custom user colors. Here's a project file with the default part colors on the left and the custom colors on the right. All of the colors on the right are literally different colors than on the left, which is not obvious when they're not right next to each other. That's what I don't like. It's weird that the custom colors don't have more contrast than the default ones. What is more handy is being able to label your custom song parts. Sometimes I have a pre-verse that sounds similar to the intro of my song, so I want a different color and name. Sometimes I have vocals or even a full verse in the bridge. Maybe I want to give my solo sections their own song parts, or even better, I'll simply recolor and put producing notes in, or someone critiquing your work could do this before sending it back to you. A quick tip is this. If I use count in beats before the intro, it will sound like this. But you notice that count ins and intros are the same song part color. And if I use the replace song parts command as we did earlier and change the intro beat, we'll lose our count in files because they are also considered intro song parts. So here's a great way to use custom user song parts as a utility to exclude forever or just temporarily exclude sections of your song so your replace song parts command can be more accurate. It's a super helpful workflow, which you may use for multiple reasons, so keep this in mind for your specific song structure workflows, like isolating different fills throughout your song, for example. Lastly, you can change the attributes or delete user song parts here. Here's a fantastic trick. On your Grooves page, you have a user MIDI folder and an area where you link to third-party MIDI folders. I can right-click on the user MIDI folder to access it on my hard drive, or you can create a new linked folder, for example, on my desktop. And in either of these two locations on my computer, I will create folders titled Intro, Verse, Pre-Chorus, Bridge, Bills, Outro, and Ending. I'll make a quick tap to find beat.
and literally drag right out of Tap Define into each of these folders on my computer. The same beat is in every folder. I'll also copy this folder structure I just created into my user MIDI directory. Now I'll right click on my user MIDI folder and select Sync File Changes. We can see my folder structure is now there. Or I could go up here for the options menu and select add linked folder. We now see it here and let's take note that when I drag each of the identical tap defined files I created to the song track, they inherit the song part color from its parent folder name that we created. Additionally, it seems you just need the song part somewhere in the name of your folder and it will still work like this. I could put cool bridge ideas. In this folder, we'll generate bridge song parts. It doesn't only have to say quote unquote bridge. This is all a super cool trick, especially for people who are meticulous about their own MIDI workflow. Keep in mind, folders that are not named in this way will always produce a verse song part. If I have a folder called Cool Beats, you can see they are verses, regardless of their attributes. And lastly, as you experience your entire Tune Track MIDI collection, a bit of their collection over the years is not segregated into song part folders, so they will always be considered a verse whether they have a verse vibe or not. A last note about song parts, there's a rare error you'll come across when you find the wrong song part in the wrong song parts column. For example, if I go to the rooms of Hansa, straight 4-4 and select the first file in the first song as my song creator file and drag it in, you'll notice that this intro beat actually derives from a verse song part. I reported this years ago with Easy Drummer 2 and it still exists now, so don't bother trying to figure this out or stress out about it. It exists and it's probably not going to change. Just seek out an intro manually, use a different source file, or use one of the many tools and options to create the right intro for your project. Lastly, I want to cover song structures in general. First, I want to speak with beginner musicians and music producers. What do you think of the song Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley? How about Eminem's One Shot, or Metallica's Enter Sandman, or Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby? Do you love these songs? Are these the best songs you've ever heard? Whether you've heard them before or not, whether you like those songs or not, let's acknowledge that these songs, and endless thousands more, have captivated millions of people when they came out and continue to do so decades after their release, not to mention have made billions of dollars of revenue. So how does that relate to us? In the case of producing music in Easy Drummer, who cares about lyrics or melodies for now? The song structures used in any popular song has a song part recipe and order that can be applied to any genre of music. I can take a highly successful rap song structure and apply that to my country song and no one would ever know because song structures don't have anything to do with genre or style for the most part. So anyone who is new to producing music, I recommend you take successful song structures seriously and try applying them to your workflow just to see if they work or not for you and go from there. Those four songs I mentioned just a minute ago, I'll make those arrangements, user arrangements available. I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute, okay? Before we continue, give me one more minute to try and inspire new musicians, okay? When I grew up, I loved local bands that were not well produced at all, and I listened to them for so long that they really rewired me not to care about song structure. I got into debates not only with passerbys, but known producers and musicians about it, and my response was always boiled down to something like, this is my art, it's what I do. But the reality is, it was my own indoctrination as a young teenager. And one day, this guy Kenny Kerner, rest in peace Kenny, and one of his producers named Boy, I wish I remembered his last name, I just tried looking him up, it was a while ago. Kenny and Boy sat me down in my band and had a way with dealing with my ego, as I'm attempting to do with your ego, if you have one. They convinced my metal band to give them one song that they would simply dice up 
and rearranged the song parts and that it was no big deal if we didn't like it. And all they simply did was repeat the hookiest part of the song and make that the chorus. And then they threw a simple song structure template on the rest of the song. That was it. Cut, 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 cut. We like this part, chorus, bam, done. That's all they did real fast. I was blown away and I really did not want to be proven wrong at all. I, my ego was sensitive. I was in my early 20s and I wanted to be right about everything, but it was too good to be in denial about this very simple formula. Up until that point, my band never made a dime besides getting a cut from a door when we played live. We were also, we were pretty happy. We were broken happy. After that point, with the same band, we got more gigs, more collaborations. We got on movie and video game soundtracks that were distributed worldwide, all because of song structure and letting my guard down to someone who wanted to help me. I could only imagine how many opportunities I missed in my life due to my pride and my ego, and I hope you got something out of that story. Be open-minded. Let people tell you things. If you don't like it, ignore it. Say thank you first because networking's everything, but just don't use it. Lastly, let's try and figure out user song arrangements and how you and I can exchange them, okay? I'll put a page on my website that has user arrangements to the songs I mentioned earlier that you can import into Easy Drummer 3 and experiment with. I'll also start a place to submit and trade song structures on my Discord channel. Discord is simply a free text chat program, among other things, where you sign up and simply click on my Discord server link and you're there. It's super easy. Click, click, click. It seems that ToonTrack isn't promoting the exchange of song structures like they do with library presets, since there's no obvious way to access them like there is with library presets. Thanks to Henrik at the Facebook ToonTrack Users Group, which is a different Facebook group than my own, but I'll link to their group in my description if you want to check them out. I visit and lurk there a couple times a week, so thank you, Henrik for your knowledge on this and a shout out to T-Bone and Shane as well for helping me test and troubleshoot. If you're totally into figuring out user song arrangements, don't worry, I have a step-by-step -step in the description, just click on the link, okay? To access user arrangements so you can import or share them on Windows, we go to this location. I have it here on the screen. On Mac, you can conveniently go to where user library presets are and click Manage in Finder, and you'll conveniently see the user arrangements in the same directory. On Mac and PC, you can copy user song arrangements to and from their respective folders. ToonTrack, if you can justify the time, it would be great to see user-friendly access to user arrangement files. Not that I don't appreciate what I already have, this is Sean from Shooty School. If you got something out of this video, I'd appreciate a comment. Comments help me out very much. So if you like what you see, do subscribe, hit the notifications, because if you watch my videos right away as they come out, you'll never see an ad because I do not put ads on my videos that have less than 1,000 views. If I've ever made your day, consider contributing. And I just hope you dug this, and I hope you are a song creator monster at this point. Okay, rock on.